some exhibitions take a lot of time and preparation to set up. The Crystals of India exhibition at the Houston Museum of Natural Sciences in Sugarland took longer, about 65 million years. curator David Temple explains why this display took so long. In the Cretaceous period, about 66 million years ago, in India they had what was arguably the world's worst volcanic eruption. It lasted perhaps uh, on and off for maybe 30,000 years, so geologically not that long, but it was such a huge eruption that it, 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 it changed the Earth's climate for sure. What happened then? the dinosaurs went extinct. So this event was certainly a game changer for life on the planet. A geode is just a hollow void and usually an igneous rock where the crystals grow. Well, that's what happened here. Uh, so you have these gas bubbles that came up, they didn't erupt, they froze and it created these voids. And in these voids, in the basalt, uh, you have these minerals growing. Houston is well known for its mineral collection um, and we should be very proud of that. That's one of the things that Houston can claim to be number one, not only in Texas, not only in the United States, but in the world. And what we have here is an exquisite collection of minerals that come from a very specific geographic locality, uh, and that being uh, southern India. So these, these are a collection of minerals that's been assembled uh, over many, many years, perhaps decades, where the people have looked at um, thousands, thousands and thousands of different minerals and selected the very best of the best. Temple says these crystals are not gems. So everybody knows about diamonds, they know about rubies, they know about emeralds. The earliest supplies of these precious gems that were used in Egypt, they were used in Rome, they were used in China, all over the world, originated in India. But these particular minerals um, weren't necessarily uh, collected that much uh, by that time because they, they're not, you can't cut them for gems. They're not uh, as durable, and even though while they're beautiful, they're not, uh, they don't really use them as gems. People that collect these, they're on par with the people that collect fine art. So, the, and the values are similar. So, for the really exquisite ones, you know, it's like you're collecting a Degas or a Van Gogh. And in some of them, it's not like it's just any Van Gogh, it's like a starry night. Sugarland Museum director Adrian Barker explains why some visitors may mistake these crystals for gems. When you look at the crystals, many of them you might think were cut with a stone cutter but actually these are naturally formed. No one has cut these stones to make them into points or, or squares or anything like that. And to me, that's fascinating as a lay person to be able to see what nature can create without the help of man. It's just fascinating. And you don't necessarily have to be a, a gem and geode lover to come in and get a nice appreciation of what nature has done in, the, in its raw form. Crystals of India will be in the museum until May 10th and during that time we have a wonderful offer while, it, while we have supplies for everyone who comes and sees the exhibit we have a crystal for them to take home and it's a nice palm sized crystal so one that, that a person truly could start a collection with. For more information go to www.hmns.org and click on HMNS at Sugarland then click on Exhibitions. For Day Trips, I'm John Woods.